All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to create API calls in a Python script. Um, so first off, in order to do that, we're going to use the Python library called requests. So if you haven't done so already, open a terminal and then install that module. So um, pip3 install requests. And I, already, I already have it installed, so um, I'm already good to go. Um, but basically, before we get to writing a script, we're going to look at an API call in Thunder Client. And then we're basically going to learn how to recreate all the components of the API call in a Python script. So to start off, I already have Thunder Client open. And I've already created a request. Um, and if you haven't used Thunder Client before, it's just uh, it's basically a VS Code extension that is like an alternative to Postman. So you can create and save API calls, uh, which is really handy. So to start off. Um, in my request here, uh, I set the method to get. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull device information. So the URL is demo.notabot.com forward slash API DCIM devices. And then I've applied one parameter. So I'm only going to pull devices that have a site of AMS01. Okay. Um, I just did that in the query tab of Thunder Client. And then after that, I just configured three headers. So as a baseline, you normally want to set your accept and content type headers. And normally those will both be application forward slash JSON. That really depends on the specific API that you're hitting. But in the case of not a bot, um, this will be the value. And then we also need to authenticate. So with not a bot, we have to use the authorization header. And then we set it to the value of the word token and then a user's specific API token. Um, so we're going to be hitting the demo not about server, and this is available for anyone on the internet. And so I already have a window open, but if you just browse to demo.notabot.com, um, you can go ahead and log in. They already have a default user created, and it's demo with a password of not a bot. So we'll go ahead and log in. And so in order to get this user's API token, once you're logged in, just hit the drop down on the top right hit profile, and then go to API tokens. Then you can see they already have one created, just a long string of A's, so you can copy that. And then you just put it in your authorization header. Um, and that's really all we need for a basic get request. So if I hit send, you can see we get a status code of 200, and then we get some return data. Um, it shows us that there are 13 devices in the AMS01 site, and then we actually have the data for all of those devices. So now we can get to work actually creating this same API call in a Python script. So what I'm going to do is in my scratch folder over here, I'm going to create a new Python file. And we'll just call it API call.py. And so again, we're going to use the requests module to actually execute this API call. So the first thing we're going to do is import requests. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start defining some of those components. So the first thing was the method. We'll get, we'll get to that later, but the second thing was the URL. So we'll create a new variable, we'll call it API URL, and we'll just set it to the same URL in our request. So I'll copy that. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave off this parameter at the end. So we're just gonna pull all devices for right now. And then the second variable is gonna be called uh, API token, and we'll go ahead and save our token here. So now what we need to do is we need to create our headers. Okay, so again, in our request, we have the accept, content type, and authorization headers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called headers, and it's gonna be equal to a dictionary. And then each header is gonna be a key value pair. So to start off, we'll say accept application JSON, content type, and I do believe these are case sensitive, but I'm not sure. And lastly, the authorization. And we'll use an F string for this. Just like that. Cool. So now we have our headers defined. Now all we need to do is actually execute the API call. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute that API call and save it into a variable. And we'll just call it data. So we're going to use requests.get. 
Now, depending on what method you, method you use in your API call, um, you'll use a particular function, right? So requests has a get method, but it also has a post, a patch, and delete, um, and all the others as well. And then typically what you're gonna pass first is the URL. So we'll say API URL. And then the next thing you're typically, typically gonna pass are the headers. And there's actually a keyword argument called headers. So we're gonna say headers, which is the keyword argument, and set it equal to our variable called headers. And then lastly, we're gonna say verify equals false. Now this is required if the API you're hitting has uh, you know, untrusted certs, basically. So uh, if we didn't put the verify argument in there, this would fail. So now that's basically all we need for a basic get request. So what we're gonna do is we're now we're gonna run that script interactively. So on the terminal, we're gonna say python-i for interactive, and then api call.py. And if you haven't used the dash i flag before, basically what it's gonna do is it's, it's gonna run this whole script, but afterwards it's gonna open a Python terminal and you'll have access to all of this data still. So we'll do it, go ahead and do that. And now if we just say data, it says response 200. And here's why. So the request get method actually returns a custom object, and that object has a type called response. So this is a response object. And by default, a response object is represented by its status code. But if we, want to, if we actually want to look at the data within it, we can access some of the methods that are available for response type objects. So um, if we want to look at just the status code, we could say data.status underscore code. Just like that, so we get a 200 back, which by the way, any any status code that starts with a two is successful. Um, now, if we actually want to look at, we could even look at the headers in that response. So we could say data.headers and then content type, for example, if I can type, application JSON. Um, and then if we want to look at the actual data within it, we say data.text, for example, we get a whole bunch of stuff, or we could say data.json, and this is, it's basically the same, but it's, uh, it follows JSON formatting standards, basically. Um, and so this is working in our Python script. We executed that API call, no problem. So now let's uh, actually apply that parameter, right? So in our original API call, we also filtered those devices based on site. So in order to do that in our API call, we can create a variable and we'll just call it parameters. And this is also gonna be a dictionary. And then each parameter is just gonna be a key value pair. So we're just gonna say site and ms01 like that. Now in our API call right here or anywhere, we can say uh, params. So the keyword argument is called params, but we'll set it equal to our variable, which is called parameters, just like that. And so back in our terminal, this is still the results from the first API call. If we look at the keys in the, so if we do data.json.keys, we can see in the return data, we have four keys. And if we look at the count, that original API call, oops, that original API call actually returned a lot of devices. So it actually returned 391 devices in total. But if we apply this parameter, we should get a lot less. So let's try it out. So we'll run our script interactively again. And now if we say data.json to access the data within it, and then uh, count, now we only get 13 devices. So that's how we can apply parameters to our, to our API call as well. So now let's say that we actually want to add a device. So first off, that's going to require a post. Okay. With Nautobot, if we want to create a new object, we need for the URL, we're going to use the list URL, so DCIM forward slash devices. And then we're going to change this get request to a post. And then in order to actually create our device, we're going to have to pass some data to the server to give it some basic information. Okay. In fact, if we do it in Thunder Client, let's get rid of that, and we'll just change the method to a post. If we execute it, 
it actually tells us what fields are required for this new device that we want to create. So for the sake of the demo, I've gone ahead and made the data that we'll need for a new device. And let's go ahead and execute it in Thunder Client. So in Thunder Client, if we want to pass data to the API, we're just going to go to the body tab. And then in the JSON tab, we'll enter our JSON content. And so this new device, I'm giving it a name. Uh, this name just follows the standard, the host name standard in Nautobot that they created. Um, and then it looks a little funky, but the device type, role, and then the site, these are actually these are actually related objects in the Nautobot database. So if we want to set, which we have to, uh, when we set the device type for this new device, we instead of referencing a device type by its name, we actually have to specify the UUID of that device type object in the Nautobot database. Now I've already gone that gone and done that ahead of time, um, but that's basically what you're seeing here. And then the status is active, all lowercase. And now if we hit send, you can see we get a status 201, so it worked, it says created. And then we get the return data for that device we just made. And now if we go back to Nautobot, let's go to organization, sites, AMS01. And now if we go to our devices, you can see that new device is now in the database. So let's go do that in our Python script. So we already changed our method to post. So now we just need to be able to pass that JSON data to the API. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called body. And this will be a dictionary as well. And this is just going to be that JSON content that we already have made. So let's go back to that. Put that in there. Just like that. And then since we already made that first device, let's make this 02. And then in our API call, we can use the keyword argument called JSON. We'll set that equal to body, just like that. And that should be all we need. So let's go ahead and run our script again. Cool. So now data should have the information on that new device we just created. Um, of course, it's, res it's a response object. So we'll say data.json to get the actual data. And here we go. Here's all the information of that next device that we just created. And now if we hit refresh in Nautobot, you can see we now have that second device as well. So lastly, let's look at how we can delete an object in Nautobot. So uh, first off, let's go ahead and change the, well, before we, before we do it in the script, let's do it in, in uh, ThunderClan as well. So according to the Nautobot documentation, if we want to delete or edit a specific object in the database, we've got to change our URL a little bit. So it's going to be the same URL, but at the end, we're going to have to add the specific UUID of the device object that we want to edit or delete. Now, luckily, we got the return data of that first device that we made. And right here, we can see the ID is right here. So let's go ahead and copy that over put that in the URL, and then all we have to do is change this to a delete and hit send. And you can see now we get a status 204, no content. So in this case, with Nautobot, uh, it doesn't actually send data back when you delete something. Okay. So now if we go back to Nautobot and hit refresh, that first device is now gone. So let's go ahead and do that in our Python script. So again, we change this method to a delete. Um, and we don't really need parameters or the body anymore, so we can go ahead and take that out. But we just need to add the UUID to the URL. So in our return data, let's go ahead and grab that the UUID of the second device we created and copy it in. And, this is, and one sort of quirk with uh, Nautobot or other uh, Django websites is um, for some API calls, you're going to you have to make sure that you put that trailing forward slash to the end of the URL. Um, just FYI, Django is a, it's a web, web framework built in Python. Um, and this is just one of those particular quirks that comes along with it. So make sure you put that trailing slash. But that should be all we need. So now if we execute our script again, 
data shouldn't actually contain anything. I don't believe. Oh, okay, it is. It's a response object. But you can see we got a status code of 204, which means it was deleted and there's no return data. And if we go to devices and Nautobot again, you can see that second device is gone as well. So again, when we're building these API calls in, in Python, we just use that request module. And then we just kind of build out the components one by one. And then we can actually use those components in the actual API call. And then for the method, we just use the specific method in the request library. So dot delete, dot get, dot patch, whatever you want. Um, if you want to pass data to the API, we're going to use that JSON keyword argument like so. Um, make sure that uh, you put that verify equals false unless you don't have to, but normally um, in a dev environment, you'll have to. And then again, parameters, that's just how you filter your query. So um, you can make a parameters dictionary and then just pass that in your API call as well. So, you know, params equals parameters like that. I mean, that's really all there is to it. I uh, appreciate you watching and hope you have a good day.